This is the California Liberty Project Podcast. So welcome back to California Liberty Project Podcast. Today is a little bit of a different thing, as you can see. We are in my home here. I'm joined by Lillian and A-Rod of Legsit. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. This is great, actually, to have the, the live interaction. I like this better than waiting through like a delay. You right. know, everything's great on the Internet. It's a great tool. But it's nice to have you guys here in my home. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for it. Thank us. you for joining me. Yeah. So for today's podcast, um, we want to talk about a few different things and then we can kind of riff a little bit. Again, right. it's nice to have that in-person interaction, right? Um, first and foremost, with Legsit, we can revisit that again. Remember, we've we've talked to these individuals before, but what is Legsit? What's it all about? What's the goal? What's the strategy? If you guys want to tell us or remind the audience about that, please do so. So Legsit does stand for you know the largest Latino exit from the Democrat Party, right. but we are faith based. Uh, right. We stand on our standards of the Bible and just the Word of God. Obviously, that's our that's our foundation. The North Star. Yeah. So we yeah. encourage um, a lot of Latinos to um, basically, you know, vote on their moral values, their Christian values, whether they're Catholic or you know sure. um, any other faith. And yeah. we just we really encourage them to just vote, and in that direction, sure. um, we do a lot of outreaches. We love to connect with the community. Um, obviously we like to share the gospel as well. So that's kind of our, um, that's our main foundation too, is Jesus, right? <laughs> very cool. Yeah. That's a great foundation, a very important foundation for sure. So just to clarify, let me ask, this is not just like a Republican national committee thing by any stretch of the imagination, no, right? No. This is more about get away from the demonic Democrat party these right, days honestly. and vote according to Christian values, vote according to what God would have you. Right. Right. So think about things through that filter. So is be, that a fair characterization? Yeah, that would be. Um, okay. It would be kingdom minded. So basically, just biblical standards. What you what you know is right. Right. Um, we don't right. even really encourage people to vote either Republican either because we want. Sure. We you know we know there's there's rhinos even in the Republican side. There's some so, issues sometimes. So it's just right. you know your moral values, your moral compass. You know right. what's right. You know that's what we push for. So cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's a very, uh, very proper mission. And so right now, I don't even know the numbers, but it's something. What, what's the percentage of Latinos in recent elections that are voting Democrat these days or in 2022, 2020? Well, in 2020, we seen that Trump actually was kind of split in the middle when it came to Latinos. And more Latinos were becoming more conservative than going the other way around. A lot of them left the Democratic Party. We don't want to say necessarily they came to the to the Republican Party. A lot of them went independent. But a lot of um, Latinos that that are that are a part of the community that work, yeah. that it affected their pockets, that that are faith based. We noticed that a lot of we call them Chicanos or that second, third generation of Latinos, they started voting um, Republican because right. they're they're already in the system. They're voting. They understand that their vote matters. So. We noticed that it started, the switch started happening. And we, I, was a part, I went to this podcast, the leftist podcast recently, and I told him, I said, don't get mad at me. They're not leaving our party coming to yours. They're leaving your party coming to ours. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think right. that's, we're seeing that. It, it, and especially, I think uh, Trump had a lot to do with it as well, because a lot of Latinos, uh, they see themselves in him, somebody that wasn't really filtered, somebody that we care about family, money, America first. And I think in a larger scale, the United States kind of was a little shocked by it because they were like, man, we, we actually got a big Latino base that is America first. Right. So, I, yeah, yeah, so I think that that kind of uh, Trump or just the, the Republican Party kind of honed in on that. And we at Lexit, like like we've talked before, we don't lean left. We don't lean right. Yeah. We stand. We stand firm in the word of God because we feel like you can't go wrong with that at the right. end of the day when you're right. held accountable either way. But, uh, yeah, um, I see it going more uh, leaning more to the right than anything else as far as the Latino base. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems to me like there are so many issues that are like slam dunk issues, right? right like right. the pocketbook issues. And this is not pandering to Latinos to blacks, to white folks, whatever. Right. Nothing like, it unites all of us as Americans. Inflation, it's a lie that inflation has only been, what, seven, 8%. Now they say 4%. That's a lie. 
The CPI is a government created lie. You go to, uh, you see some of these viral videos, people going to like Costco filming themselves, like mm -hmm. talking about it. Prices have doubled in the right. past two years. Oh, yeah. um, now I know grocery prices are not the whole of the economy, but they're lying to us with inflation. It seems like we should be able to attack Bidenomics and the Democrat party's failing policies on economics. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Crime exploding. Right. That's something we've all seen, we all feel. It's not just Latinos in the Central Valley or in LA or San Diego. It's all Americans, mm -hmm. but a lot of times maybe Latinos or Mexican Americans, you know, our, our brothers, sisters, our, our neighbors here in this valley, in this state, a lot of times they face the brunt of these, um, mm -hmm. these issues. Everyone, everyone gets hit with these. I don't want to say it that way, but there are pockets of our state that are either impoverished or we have a lot of, a lot more Latinos mm -hmm. and they're certainly feeling the inflation, the crime, um, and even the gas tax. Um, stuff like this where it's like, Newsom, you guys, and I'm talking California now, but they could so easily take away that gas tax, which is regressive, which does hit the working man and working woman, working right. families, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It seems like there are so many opportunities um, to make inroads with uh, Latinos. Yeah, no, you're right, 100%. Well, let's get to it. Yeah, no, no, you're right. <laughs> right? You guys yeah, are, especially here in California, You, I, I think it's, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people, it, it, I, it kind of frustrates me because the Democratic Party is like handing over these Latinos and the Republican Party is just sitting there like not doing it all. Dude, we, yeah, yeah. We, we recently, when, when Lillian was running uh, uh, for, for school board, we went to a Dolores Huerta and everybody here in California knows who Dolores Huerta is. Yeah. We yeah. went to uh, something that she was holding, an event she was holding for um, candidates and, and Lillian was invited. And we're like, a lot of uh, conservative candidates were like, we're not going. We were like, right. they kept what? what? I was like, to go. Like, give like, my boots, don't we're don't going. Go. Yeah. You know, because I, yeah. I I like this conference. I want to have this this dialogue because I want to be able to to wake them up. You, right. you know, even if we're not there for that, for that purpose. But we get there and, 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 and it was like a shell shock. I walked in. It felt like being at your grandma's house. You walked in, they had sweet bread, they coffee. had coffee. They even bust in farm workers mm -hmm. and they had headphones with the translator there. And I wow. thought to myself, wow. And I thought, when's the last time the Republican Party has done any of that? And I know a lot of them are like, well, we don't pander, but it's not even that. It's just a good- They don't try. They don't try Forget to- Forget pander, they don't yeah. try. They don't they try don't to try connect. And, and, I, and I understand the, the different cultures and I get that. But in the bigger scheme of things and the bigger goal of, of trying to win over um, California in general, you got to put those kind of differences aside and, and, and want to share space with people that maybe you've never shared space with before, yeah. because then what's going to happen is you're going to share, you're going to end up giving up space to people that you don't even think uh, like when it comes to your own ideology. So you got to pick and choose. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I, they're like, no, I'd rather just, we'd rather keep what we do and run it into the ground. And it's like, is that the best strategy? So that was eye opening. So I, I, I truly feel the democratic party is literally doing their best to ruin it. And a lot of Latinos are looking at it being like, you're ruining it. But then the Republican Party is like, don't come over. And it's a lot of independence because independent voting block is the largest voting block there is sure. out there with yeah. a lot of Latinos there. And it's like right for the picking and they don't even take advantage of it. So it's like it's a lot of stage. It was staged too. Right. right, I felt right. Like it was oh, staged. yeah, of course. There's but, a lot of that. Right. A lot of putting so up staged. props. Right. I bet right. you even I'm just guessing. The I wasn't questions. there. But the questions yeah. and then even like bringing in like the translator. Oh, yeah. Right. Bringing right. in the, the older, like only Spanish speaking, like yes. farm work. Like yes. God bless them. But that's, exactly that's a prop. They They're bringing in human beings as props. Right. right. Which is what Dolores Huerta does. Right. And she's got this big machine. They're building in, in downtown Bakersfield, this big like worship center where you go in and you worship her, you know, like a golden calf. Right. right. They're building that downtown. The Dolores Huerta Center. Have right. You heard right. About yeah. this? No. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, the amount of money these people have. Well, she just got she just got literally about a month ago a seven billion seven million dollar grant. Probably it's million. Go, I hope million. million. Don't yeah. tell me yeah. billion. Yeah. It's a <laughs> sorry, my bad. Yeah. Um, it's a seven million grant towards her uh, peace and something culture foundation. Yeah, that's that it. What and they're building a bit, yeah, okay. building a large temple. Okay. I yeah. think to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, right. <laughs> It's well, okay. It's not really a temple, and I right? Just, and I just, but, but it is going to have a steeple. Well. Yeah. You know what? It, there will be an altar. So I don't I'm not trying to give her no praise or nothing. But I seen right. a video recently, or it was a TikTok, mm -hmm. where she actually said, "I don't like the word Hispanic. I feel like I, if somebody's offensive." She said, "But also Latinx. I don't like the word." 
Okay. Just, and I was like, well, that's right. saying. I know right? that doesn't mean anything, but I, just, I don't like yeah. Hispanic yeah. either. It's like a, that's like a Nixon like right, campaign, right, right, and, right, 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 right? But right, right. I don't know what's your what's your perspective on Hispanic? Is that dumb? I don't think it really does matter? matter. To me, it doesn't really matter. I don't. I don't. I, people. Some people don't like Latino. Yeah. Some people don't like you say you're Hispanic or or Mexican or or Chicanos or, only yeah, Mexican American. Well, right. That's the thing. Is like my mom grew up in that Chicano era. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where yeah. that was before. So. That would be my mom's there. So it's like, what are we? So it, it it's gets just, a little confusing yeah, because yeah. then when you're trying to differentiate, like for well, me, I just consider myself Mexican. That's um, it. Yeah. My family is, you know, my mom's side is from Sonora, Mexico. Right. My dad is is also from that area as well. You know, so you're a and so it's like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. mean, we were born here. But you're 100 percent American. Well, right. it's, it's your right. ancestry. Yeah, so right? I, I went on a TikTok yeah. live last night. I'm, I'm on TikTok, and all of a sudden, I, I see this guy, right? And I look at him, and I'm like, okay, he looks like Jimmy Neutron, but he has a Hispanic flag behind him. I'm like, okay, cool. This guy looks like a, a perv or whatever. So, right. anyways, but he has this picture up, and it's like Biden. And he's like, er, like, like a cool picture of Biden, not the yeah. one where he falls off the bike, but like a really cool picture of Biden. And then Trump's like hairs all falling off, and he's got this whack picture. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he says, Biden. It says Latinos and it says Biden, 79% Trump, uh, whatever percent. And I'm sitting there going, what? And I, I keep on saying false poll, false poll. Finally, he has like yeah. thousands of followers and he jumps on and he goes, okay, I'm not going to, you know what? Let's look at this guy. Oh, he has some followers. And all of a sudden it says, let go live. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, let's go live. Let's so do I, this. So yeah, I click on it, it. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, what's this? So it shows my profile. Right. Yeah. And he's like, are you even, okay. And then he wants to start. He's like, so is this poll? Uh, do you believe this poll is wrong? And I said, 100%. Show me your facts. I go, oh, okay, hold on real quick. Where did you get? No, no, no. You show me. If I, right. Did you? Did, right. Okay, okay. This is what I'm going to do. And he's like, you guys see this guy? And I go, no, no, no. Okay, hold on. And he let me talk. And I go, so tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy's same picture and I'm going to flip the numbers. Yeah. And then when he comes on, I'm going to say, show me where you're, show me. right." And he goes, okay, where are you from? And I go, what do you mean? Where are you from? I go, uh, right now I'm currently in Bakersfield. No, where are you from? I said, I was born in Delano. Yeah. Where are you from? Bro, what are you trying to get at? Where are you from? I go, well, my 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 uh my dad's uh family's from here. Oh, so you're Mexican. You, your your ancestors would be rolling over in their grave, oh, right? Lord. So then I turn around, I go, really? Why? Because you are for this guy right here. And I said, look, calm down, Jimmy Neutron. Let me tell you something real quick. And he's like, oh, Jimmy Neutron. That's original. Actually, that's kind of cool. Because he has this little mustache and he has this little bump door. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So he I said, like that nickname. Right. So then I was joking with like, bro, it's a joke. And I go, look, it. my uncle marks with Cesar Chavez. Look, anybody that's on here right now, there's 600 people on here. Look up Roberto Bustos. So we're going back and forth. And he's like, well, uh, Cesar Chavez, well, he hated the Mexican community. So we're going back and forth. And finally, I told him. Oh, yeah. And then when I got him to a point where he, he where I said, look, you're a disgrace because you know what? You're hundred percent for abortion. I've seen. And he goes, I am. And I said, your ancestors will be rolling over in the grave. And all of sure. a sudden it was like, you're off the line. And I just yeah. saw that I was off the line and I was like, okay. Oh, wow. And I was like, whatever. But that's what it usually comes down to. You have, sure. there's people out there that are pulling, putting false numbers yeah. and they're just showing out there. And I don't say they're paid people, but they're people in the Latino community that will look at people like us that are giving actual facts and they're actually independently thinking for ourselves and they'll call us white nationalists or right. all of a sudden yeah. you're, right yeah. or and I'm like white coconut. nationalists I'm like coconut, coconut. coconut. Yeah. Yeah. Right. so yeah. it, it devalues your own independent thought and I, I thought I used to think to myself that's what the left is about to be able to have your, yeah. you gotta yeah. think all the same way like bots and drones right. the left is very good at that yeah, they right. Are. Right. They yeah. Are. I mean they get their people in line yeah right, right? They when right. they're when they're fighting their revolution they they don't they don't brook any dissent they don't tolerate it right like, you're with the company line or you're out, right? Right, right. That's the idea of political correctness. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Going back so, to Stalin and Lenin. Yeah, no, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so in terms of plans, concrete plans, I know you got a lot of partnerships, you, you're growing the movement. Um, what are some other things or initiatives that you have coming up? Or what, what do you want to do, Lillian, as, as the new kind of national director? Well, I think for me, I'm focusing on the outreaches right now. I really yeah. feel that we need to connect with the community here in Bakersfield. Right. Uh, get right. to know, you know, just families in general. I think, yeah. I think when you look at it from Jesus's approach, if I want to bring that up, it's like, you know, the Gospels. He did a lot of footwork and he sat with people and got to know them and for sure, you know, the, the gospel yeah. talks about, you know, just how he can, he broke bread with people. So I think that sure. that's my main approach right now, connecting with the community. I want to connect with a lot of pastors here. Right. Um, 
just to kind of see Lexit as a different, it's not so, you know, we're not always pushing, you know, we're not just about political, we're also sure. about outreaches and right. helping the community grow and get connected, help the kids, you know, so that's, that's my goal right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think absolutely. that's a real quick to add on to that. I think it's a good strategy. I, I think a lot of people don't think about that when they look at the Latino community. And I, I know most people are like, oh, check it out. The Latino community, they're, they're actually becoming more conservative. Hmm. So that's cool. It's probably this, this and that. But when it comes to outreach, they don't realize that I, I can't go there and give them a, a list of policies unless right. they've been affected by it myself. Yeah. But me trying to tell somebody this is what you should be concerned in, right. it's hard on anybody to be like, right. okay, I believe you, yeah. but let me find out for myself. But when you come to people with their own faith and you say, okay, look it, you draw a line here. What's the most important faith? Yeah. Okay. Do you agree that pushing this with the kids? Well, that's the devil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You could help us do this. And all of a sudden they're like, it's taking that step over. Yeah. And that's a strategy that we've used at Legsit that has worked wonders. Right. Because right. even recently, I want to talk about this, that we were contacted by the Trump campaign and they want to, Trump wants to, to meet with us and us to go down to Mar-a-Lago and, 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 and discuss different stuff. But the biggest thing to I connect. took from the, to connect, the biggest mm -hmm. thing I took from the call is the guy said, you know what, we're going to end this call, but I want you guys to know that you guys were contacted. This is, and to me, I was like, well, he was, you guys were contacted because your guys is not, not, you guys don't waver when it comes to your guys' faith. Right. To us, whether you believe in stuff or not, that's huge because we want it to, we want real people. So that told me that people that Trump had next to him before, maybe they were wishy-washy or right. they just wanted to take pictures with Trump or whatever. Yeah. So, now, so, yeah. so, so, so yeah, they've seen that. The right. And we've been yeah. very critical at times of things like, hey, we don't, Trump, the, the, the jab, but yeah, and the people Operation like, Warp yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at you and they're like, hey, bro, you can't talk about that. But I remember when Rush Limbaugh was was around and, and he was doing stuff with the guns and the red flags and all that. And he came out and goes, you're making a huge mistake. On Monday, Trump called in on Wednesday and goes, you know what? Maybe you're right. I'll look into it. And I thought to myself, that's huge, because if you're the guy in the room and everybody says, yes, you really don't think you're doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But you have to have people that say, look, you're not perfect. Make just one or two. Go back to this. The majority of people don't. And he could easily right. be like, are those voting issues? Are they not voting issues? We'll have that discussion. Sure. But if, if somebody's not saying, hey, the majority of people don't like this, maybe it's better just to stay silent. See, when people came out and said, don't talk about this. Yeah. What did he yeah. do? He backtracked and it was like, mom's the word. Right. You talk about right. it. And that's smart because it appeases people. And they're like, OK, cool. Because it's not like pretty much uh, supporting it. So I thought that was huge. So that was a conversation we we're having. And um it's kind of the direction we're going, leading by faith first and be recognized yeah. by that. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I would guess that one of the big challenges that your organization is going to face is the decoupling of like the culture of being Latino, the culture of being like a Mexican-American with mm -hmm. having it intertwined with the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. And so even think about it in the San Joaquin Valley around here. Um, the farm worker movement, right? UFW, right. the flags, they got that flag, the red and black flag, Dolores Huerta. So much of it is like, oh, like my uncle or my aunt or my right. mom marched, yeah. marched with them, Delano's, yeah. you know, 68 or whatever right. it was. Right. There's a cultural center right up on the right. 58, you know, right. in Keene or Caliente. Right. Um, so much of it, it, it's brilliant marketing, brilliant marketing. Right. It's all intertwined. I'm a Latino, yeah, my my uncle, Tia or Tia, you know, right. they marched right. with right. them, you know, and the, yeah. So it's all tied in, but it's like, it's not that connection of like far left policies, right? Like Dolores Huerta, you might think, oh, this is a Catholic woman. I, she must be pro-life. She must support this and that. And that. no, it's no, like, it's... check the box. As far as I know, I believe it's like far left policies on down the line every time. And part of it's like, we got to extract like the, the culture of being Latino with, oh yeah, of course we're like Democrat party. I mean, RFK and we had you know, this and that, Cesar Chavez, mm -hmm. right? I mean, am I, am I on no, something there? Yeah, you oh, are. And it, it doesn't pull help. that apart. And it doesn't yeah. help when you have, you know, social media in Spanish, which is, you know, you have the major news, right? which is Telemundo, Televisión, yeah. Univision. Many of those are far are, left, yes, from what I understand. very far left. Right. And so it doesn't help when you have just nothing but left ideologies being pushed over into the Hispanic culture. It's only sure. Spanish speaking people. So right. it, that's why it's so important that we do go and do these outreaches because it gives us the, that opportunity to connect with the people and then share. 
because obviously they're going to ask eventually and they're going to be like, well, what's Lexic? What is Lexic? Sure. Some of them probably haven't heard of it. And you seem like nice, normal people. Right. But, wow. There's a, there's a different side to this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or give them right. a safe haven, a place to go to. Right. Yes. You know, it, it, right. it's funny because I think one, well, actually the first time I met Lillian or seen her, we were at a school board meeting and I seen her up there speaking and she, it was her event or she was putting it together. And I was like, hmm. I was with Lexic, but I'm like, cool. This is a girl. She's a Latina. That's cool. So I ended up speaking that day, and, and it's funny because I turn around and I'm mentioning Cesar Chavez and and how my uncle marks and which is just the speech that I gave. I get off. Here comes Cesar Chavez's niece, who runs the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Okay. Mm-hmm. She comes up and she turns around and she looks at me and she goes, "I'm with the. We were actually advocating for the opposite thing she was. She mm-hmm. says, "I know your uncle as well." And we actually, this is her words right after, we actually stand for LGBT community. I mean, LGBT curriculum be pushed in the schools. So you literally have a split. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. the, and and what got me out of all that was, hold on, you definitely don't represent the Latino community, but if there's no other representation besides you, guess what? There's a stamp of approval. Sure. It's off into the wind. Nobody's going right. to question it. Yeah. It's done. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of Latinos that are like us. They just don't have nowhere to go right. and no support. So they stay quiet. They're like, wow, mm-hmm. this lady's done. She's yes, because they're looking at the past. They're not looking at what she's doing now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've noticed that because um, my parents are involved with a um, heavily Latino church here in town. And, you know, they do a lot of work with them, have a lot of friends over there. And I've gotten to know some of those people. So, like, anecdotally, I'm thinking that a lot of those good people over there in that Catholic parish are maybe apolitical or don't right. think of themselves as political. But mm-hmm. the problem is too much of the time you get that linkage where it's right. like, yeah, I'm not really political, but I go into that voting booth if I do vote D, 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 Dem every time, just mm-hmm. like by default. Right. And I think... Part of it's like, okay, if you're apolitical, that's fine. That's cool. Politics shouldn't run your life. Mm-hmm. But when you go into that voting booth, at least consider both sides, right. right? At least know that there is a different side to this, you know, whether you're right wing, whether you're just kind of independent minded and you maybe select different candidates each time. Although I don't know why you'd select Democrats, you know, 99% of the time. Because but that's a lot fine. of Latinos that's can't fine. think outside of their own skin color. Yeah. It, yeah. It's the craziest thing. And I think I said this the last time we were live. Somebody told me this. They were like, hey, hey Rod, I have the privilege of thinking for my, as a white guy. I have the privilege. I'm going to point at you as a white guy. Yeah, you know, as a white guy. My white guy. No, it is, I, have the, I have the privilege of thinking for myself without being called a traitor to my race. You don't have that privilege. I could vote Republican, conservative, sure. libertarian, and I'll never be called a traitor. You will. That's true slavery in the mind. And right. I thought to my, that's the hardest thing is because I, somebody told me one time, it's Ross. I just had the argument with my coworker today and we're on Santa Fe and, and rain in the middle of nowhere. We're doing the, the, the roads and he turned around and looked at me. He's like, but you don't have it. I go, what experience are you talking about? What Rasa do you want me to stick with? My yeah. uncle that murdered his, his best friend or the, the Rasa that's in prison right now? Is that, I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stand by like-minded people that believe the same thing I do because I'm not going to stand by uh, somebody I know that molested a little girl that came over here illegally. You want me to stand by him because he looks like me? Yeah. So that analogy, that doesn't even make sense. There's yeah. bad people everywhere. And I, and I sure. always tell people, if, if, if you kill somebody in Mexico, if you kill somebody in Africa, they always look at it as a sinful act. It's a horrible act. But if you do it and you don't look like somebody here, it's racism. Sure. Why is that? It's the same evil act. You right. have to look at things as bad. Things right. as simple. It's not as things that, and don't get Citizen. me wrong. There are people yeah. that don't like somebody because of the way they look. Right. I, I get that because I see it. But I, that's everywhere. Don't yeah. subject it just to white people. That's crazy to me. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think that's nuts. I think that's where the separate is hard with Latinos. But that's the, that's yeah. the conditioning that we have going on, right. especially with the with the Spanish speaking only. Sure. Because we have a lot of young, they're young kids that are in school. You know, yeah. they come they come over here to have a better life for their families, obviously. And then sure. you have these this younger generation that's really involved in, you know, all of the new age and whatever it is that they're pushing in the culture right now. And so then they go back and they do speak some of these majority of these kids. They do speak Spanish. Because sure. They have to com- communicate the with their only mm-hmm. Spanish speaking yeah, parents. Yeah, yeah. Right? right. So then they feed them what they want the parents to hear. And then when they come in and they That's hear huge. Dolores Huerta, oh, yeah. Yeah. then it's like, oh yeah, we know Dolores Huerta. Like she's, she's for all of these, these things. They that, see her getting arrested you know? and they're like, yeah, so then, yeah. yeah, it's got so cultural cachet. It's already yeah. been, you know, established there. So automatically they think she's doing what's right, but right. what, 
what has changed so much is that the Democrats that were then, they're not the same ones that are now. Right. They're very different in how they're pushing everything. Yeah. I mean, I grew up Democrat. That's what my dad would tell me all the time. You're Democrat. If anybody asks you, that's what you are. And I'd be like, okay, because yeah, to I, me, it was like, yeah, right? you're, either, not, Raiders, no, you're of, either a Raider fan. Right. right. You're yeah, a I'm a Raider Nation. Hey, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hey, this is Raider color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you're you not know, a 49ers fan. Or you're a Catholic. You yeah. have to be a Catholic. So right, it's Raiders, right. Catholic, and Democrat. And that's usually how it works right, in right. Latino families. And so. Well, yeah. and you hear that. You hear that word. You mentioned it, I think. La Raza. Right. I mean, Raza. that that gives a lot of people like a red flag. A lot of people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That means in English, the race, right? right. Like, now, of course, there are broad up connotations with that. You know, there's a lot of baggage. But I think, one, it's master marketing. Right. I think like, oh, La Raza. Oh, yeah. Whoa, we stand together. But again, cultural linkage is right. what I'm thinking. But two, if I dig down into it, and it gets really dicey, really, really dangerous very quickly. But La Raza, okay, what race is it that you're, you know, because Latinos oh, yeah. are abroad beautiful tapestry of Spanish yeah. lineage yeah. with the native people. They don't want to talk about the Spanish. They don't want to talk about the Spanish. So they want to talk about the native peoples. Yeah. And there, I'm sure some beautiful, peaceful native peoples from the Americans, uh, from the Americas before Columbus arrived or whatever I'm supposed to say. But there were a lot of cultures that were practicing human sacrifice, mm -hmm. eating each other. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, oh, so therefore, you know, the Europeans should have taken, I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is when you start saying stuff like, La Raza, Viva La Raza, and I identify with La Raza. It's like one, what race? And two, what is it about the pre-Columbian Aztec? Like, what do you want to tell me? What part of ripping someone's heart out, you know, and bloodbaths on pyramids and structures and these in these bizarre pagan rituals? What about that do you want to preserve? Well, Go, it's, it's, tell yeah. me, it, it, please. It, it, I want to know. It's because it's growing up. You're taught. You come from this dude that had like feathers and he's sitting there on top of a rock and he's right, got, you know what I mean? Right. With his wife and, and he's got so her across, pain. you know, it's, all the, he's got her. Made out. He's, he's in tune that. with nature. Right. 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 He's right. mother nature. Right. Again, yeah. idolatry, pagan, we worship right. the earth, but, and that's fine. Some people have different faiths. I'm not here to trash other people's legitimate faiths. Um, and maybe they're not Christian or whatever I get. I'm not mocking native culture, but what I'm saying is I am mocking cannibalism yeah. right. and rape and torture and human sacrifice. Well, those are things I'm against that. About. I'm well, the them. other day yeah. I was on the, I'm against the, the same buddy that yeah, I argue exactly. with all the time. <laughs> I, we had two situations that happened during the day where I'm like, that's racist. And they came from our own kind. One I won't talk about because it was real out there. We were, we were on Patton and uh, Hageman. And we we're working on the side of the road. We were sitting there. Lady pulls up and she says in Spanish. And she says strongly. And she tells him and tells me because we're sitting there working. And she says, our, our, and mind you, she was waiting because the lights were on flash mm -hmm. for a white gentleman to cross uh, uh, the, the crosswalk. Okay. So she's waiting, you know, she, he crosses and sure she looks at us. So I was watching all this and I'm like, this lady don't hit this guy. He just walked in and she goes, you know, only our race, she says in Spanish, would do this. She goes like that. Only our race would do this. White people would, could oh. never work like this. Only us. This comes from us. Okay. And my buddy, of course, because he's always arguing me, he goes, I'm going to shed a tear right now. And then I, I, go, I turn on and I go, I want to be proud, but then I think I'm pissed off too. And then yeah, he, right. we was having a conversation. I go, bro, this is what I'm talking about. We were in another situation about Martin Luther King. That was extremely racist. We were in a situation right here hmm. where somebody looks just like us. That, to me, if it came from a white person, that would be headline news. They would have a lot of yeah. rasa at their houses trying to protest. Sure. Yeah. I go, but how come it's okay that we do it? And he goes, it's an experience. I said, what experience? Yeah. I said, the, the, I said, I, I seen a live one time. Lived experience. Yeah, I, I told him. I, I said, I seen a live one time with this guy named Keenface, and I and I love what he said. He's a rapper, and he was around a bunch of rappers, and he said, "How many of you guys know friends that have been shot by cops?" And they're black guys. And then he goes, "I know two. He goes, "How many? Go speak now. Go. Yeah. How many? Three. How many? One. Okay. Now, how many of you guys know that were killed by your own people?" And he was like, "Take." Get out of here. More than 10. You know that. 12, 15. He's also, why are we trying to fi fix a leaky faucet in the kitchen? And we're literally in a flood in the whole house. Yeah. He goes, yeah. and that's the that's problem good. is that you willfully are ignoring what's going on in our own house. And that's basically what she, I mean, to me, I'm like, he's just sitting there going, you're talking about racism when it comes with them. What she just said was putting down that guy that just walked past. Yeah. I said, don't you see that? And he was just like, yeah, but 
still made me feel proud. And I'm like, yeah, get out of here. Because <laughs> right, right. only those dudes are working hard, right? It wasn't the Irish immigrants in the 1880s. I got, there's a white guy at the yard that's yeah, working on yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, in the shipyards yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's only, yeah. I mean, you start getting into that and it's almost not even worth addressing because it's yeah. like, all right, that's just, it's an old attitude. Whatever. Right. I'm not offended, you know, right, as, a, right. yeah. as a Caucasian American, it doesn't right. really bother me. But um, yeah, so getting, getting beyond that, I think the outreach is critical, mm -hmm. right? It's really just having that FaceTime um, yeah. to go back to that point, um, which I like because then you're establishing real relationships. You can joke, you can laugh, you can show people like, I'm really here with right, you. Right. We live in the same neighborhood or we live in the same town. Yeah. And by the way, we can think differently. Right. Yeah. Just my skin tone or just my ethnicity or my last name does not dictate who I am. And I mean, it sounds like Captain Obvious, I right? Think, but it's very important to, important to just show that, I think. Right. And reach out to people. And I think, I think what people are looking for nowadays is um, because it's so lacked, it's just, it's lacked so much in our government, um, just in culture in general, is um, going back to having integrity and yeah. honoring each other. And I think that that's a big thing that, you know, people are looking for that. They're looking to see who they can trust and who can, they can really believe in what they're going to say is actually following through with their word. And I think that that's the one thing about Lexit that I liked when I learned about Lexit was that right. they were standing firm on the beliefs of the, of, you know, just standards, biblical sure. standards, and then really saying, you know what? Yeah, no, we're not going to compromise. Right. That's just not, that's not what we're doing. And we're going to stand by it no matter what. And, yeah. it, you know, sometimes, you know, we get pushed back, right? <laughs> we, we get pushed back. We have good. naysayers. We have, you know, but if you don't have that, then you're not really you're you're channel, not, exactly right? you're not yeah. really causing any you For know sure. any people to really think outside of the box see it differently you know of what the culture is pushing right now so it's really important for us to connect because then it gives us that opportunity to talk to them and and just share our thoughts whether they agree or don't agree right you know? right and they might agree with some of the stuff mm -hmm. you're saying they might disagree with it that's good yeah, yeah have a brain be go through the list think yeah you know discriminate ideas a little yeah. bit um mm -hmm. you know work through ideas let me ask you Okay, as, as Latinos with Lexit, the border crisis, the so-called border, and sometimes I watch what's going on on the news, I think, oh my gosh, this is it like, is it just like, you know, are they exaggerating it? And I don't think they are. I think no, it really yeah. has gotten bad. Um, it's a complete catastrophe. But how do you talk to Latinos or Spanish speakers and say, yeah, we are not trying to keep those people out or how do you, how do you address it? Let me just back up and say, how do you address the border crisis? People sneaking across, um, wanting to crack down or wanting a wall to be built, but maybe with, maybe with a door where people could come visit, people could come work. They sign in, in the little register, you know, come in mm -hmm. and say, hi, I'm not with Hamas or Hezbollah or whatever. Right, yeah. I want to come visit your country. I want to come be in America. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I promise I'm not with it. But how do you broach that topic? Um, when you're going and doing this outreach, you know, the border is a big one for all of us. Right, right. And I think, you know, well, I mean, you look at it, a lot of them are coming over here because they want a better life for themselves. And I, I do, I do understand that there are genuine people. Some of them are coming just for work. Um, but when you look at the bigger picture, if you were to do this in another country, let's say Italy or whatever, where you have to have a passport to come in sure. right away, they're not going to open their borders to you and say, oh, yeah, just come and live here because we don't know anything about you. Yeah. So for us and your like, kids will be citizens. Right. Automatically. Right. And I think that when I give perspective in that way, because I've had conversations like this, you know, with my family, with, you know, my mom, you know, who's Spanish right. speaking only my mom. She's lived here for many, many, many years. Um, yeah. And, you know, but she. You know, she's she she has she's been here for so long. But even as she says, you know, well, I don't really care what kind of goes on around here. You know, she's kind of mentioned that because she says this is really my home and she'll, mm -hmm. she'll revert back to Mexico being her home and where she came from. And yeah. so then I say, well, mom, it's like, you know, that kind of attitude is, you know, I am from here. You sure. should care because right. your grandchildren were born here. Yes. And anything that happens here in the United States is affecting us and we're your generation. So it's, it, you know, it gets into that conversation, opening that line. And I think that that's when you give them perspective with the borders. This is the reason why it needs to be um, more secure. This is the reason why we need to shut, you know, um, you know, build the wall. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I just never understood why people hold their, a, you know? allegiance to a place that it does nothing for them. I mean, I, right. I know a lot of times some people are like, have you been there? It's beautiful. They, and I'm like, well, I, it's I like get, that pride. Yeah, that cultural I, and heritage. I get all that. And, and, but but you're here. 
Yeah, but, why are right. you but, here? I'm like, but, but, but you're here. You're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. Yeah. Right. And to me, I just, I, I'm of a big uh, supporter on, on the border. I, I Jesse, Jesse is even bigger than me. He's he actually was happy that that um, Trump was building all, but he actually liked that Trump also was giving during you know when the the, uh, the Democrats said that he didn't uh, give a pathway to citizenship with DACA and all that, and yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he actually did, and that was right. smart. Yeah. And the, and actually how the Democrats played that was even smarter when they were like, no, 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 we don't agree in the wall, but really they didn't want to give the DACA. That's because they yeah. knew if the DACA would have went through, it would have won a lot of people over. Right. That was that was smart, but. Right. Yeah. I, I uh, like I always say, the left to use their own ideology, just like they say it takes one bad cop and they want to reform the whole thing. Yeah. Well, guess what? It takes one bad illegal. And then yeah. guess what? Yeah. Shut the whole thing down. Then. If that's what you want. They, but they don't want that. They don't want and that the because thing, it's easier yeah. to give a handout to people and, right and keep people there feeding like, you know. Yes. Yeah. Right. right. And they're right. not they're and not energy. really vetting. I mean, they're not really they're not paying attention to really who's coming through the borders either. Not at all. They have not vetted. Oh, thousands of people from different from. Le I mean, they're coming in from Lebanon, Iran. I mean, there's they're coming in from many different places. We you know, here in the United States, obviously, it's they're here. They're God forbid here. something, that, right. something like what right. just happened in southern Israel, mm -hmm. right, could, could yeah. occur. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. And people have made this point before, but it's just amazing how. Even the Uniparty, I mean, even through a lot of bad Republicans in there, Democrats, how they're so into 60 billion, 100 billion for Ukraine's borders. Mm -hmm. um, and now also Israel, a lot of conservatives too with Israel's border. Right. And everyone, everybody decries what happened, the brutal slaughter right. in uh, southern Israel with Hamas, those mm -hmm. disgusting terrorists, those murderers, what happened two weeks ago, of course, right? But now all of a sudden, We've even got some conservatives, Republicans, who want to send, you know, bill, millions, even billions to Israel, certainly to Ukraine, about their borders. And then you're thinking about it like, hold on, this is really simple. Right. What about our own borders? Right. It's in Why crisis. are we securing our backyard yeah. here? El Paso, um, what's happening all across Texas, Rio Grande Valley, um, parts of New Mexico, California even, but the big passageways up through Texas. It's anarchy. We have cartels operating, yeah. from what I hear, even across the border. Our border. We're Americans. Yeah. Those are our people that are right. getting killed. Right. Those are ranchers in Texas that are their their properties being overrun right. Right. with some criminals and even the human trafficking. Do we really want teenage girls being trafficked through someone's ranch? Mm -hmm. So it's a property rights issue. It's a let's protect our countrymen issue. And it's just let's not have human trafficking. Right. 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 But why is it okay to ignore our own border and then spend billions sending it to Ukraine and millions well, to Israel it's now? It's strategic. It's very strategic what they're doing. They're trying to take down our defenses here in the United States because we've been a very blessed nation. And when you look at the foundation of where we came from, we were founded on God in, in trusting in the Lord, right? And a lot of people may agree or not agree to that, but it's in the Constitution. And so when you look at that, it's like, okay, well, I mean, I'm very spiritual, you know, and, sure. and for me, it's like, I look at the word of God and what it says. And when you have a foundation, you're going to try to, you're going to disarm wherever you can. And it's been happening since the Clintons, since the sure. Clintons were in, in power. Right. So, right. you know, you look at our defenses, they're not up anymore. And so it's, it's a strategy. Yeah. They got to get you distracted over here and over there so that your back door is still left open. And then mm -hmm. you can eventually... I mean, I don't know. For us, I mean, we've always sided with Israel as a nation, right? We've always stood mm -hmm. for, for Israel as a uh, United States. And so just like they're seeing them as the enemy, we're another we're another target over here. You know, yeah. it's like they're seeing us as number one enemy, too. Right. I yeah. think it's a couple Israel's of, complicated, but go yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a couple of things the way people kind of look at it, because you look at our border, right? And, and normal, everyday Americans are like, OK, we're looking at our border and we're like, well, that's a shame. And then you look at Congress and you look at them and they're all of a sudden you're like, uh, uh, how many how many billions to who? Right. And then you're looking at this and then you're looking, you don't trust government. You're thinking in, 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 a, in the best case scenario, you would say, OK, if we trusted our government and they were putting into our border and our border was solid, we wouldn't care where money went if it was right. for something good. Yeah. But you're looking at it like this. The border's in shambles. I don't even trust you guys. Are you right. guys laundering money? What are you right. guys even doing yeah, with this stuff? Yeah. So Where I think really that's... But I might even the gently, time. respectfully disagree. I might even just say I stick to the Constitution. Right. I say not right. once. Some of us are hardcore like... Right, right, right. There are terrible things happening around the right. world. Terrible right. things happening right. in North Korea. There are right. terrible right. things happening. You throw a dart at the map, right? right. Yeah. There are injustices. There's evil all over the 
But the reason we have a government is not to fight evil around the world. That, right. So I would say stick to the Constitution, but not to quibble. But right, some right, of right, us right, would right. say it's tough because once we get into that, yeah, because a lot of people evil, are, you never stop. Yeah, because you got people, I, I, and I've had the same conversation with somebody, and they're like, yeah. and it becomes one of those things where, yeah, you have to stick next to something because then you talk to somebody that's really super into the word. They're like, the only reason why we're even blessed is because we stood by Israel. And that's a lot of Christians mindset yeah. that's sure. just that what they think they're like because you think we just got lucky or god wasn't involved in it or god just said you guys or we didn't so you, you get into this big old thing where you're like and i believe you're right a lot of times that's why god gave us the bible or god gave us the constitution because without what do you substitute morality with once you get it out or right. a constitution with you whatever you feel is right and i feel is yes right. 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 right right and a big concept um certainly in christianity definitely catholicism is subsidiary right? right so it's that we want to devolve control to the lowest or most local level that we can right so that's why you know in families you know there's a headship there right. in in neighborhoods there are neighborhood councils or city councils that right. should control the potholes you know potholes are bad but i don't want the u.s government coming out fixing potholes. I don't want a pothole division. It's not in the constitution and it, right, it right, doesn't right. make sense, right? Right, right? So there's, you know, if you kind of scale up, there's some logic to that where it's like, we cannot fix the world's problems. We don't have the money, the resources um, and so forth. Even though I know a lot of people are like, yeah, but Israel, it's, right. it's biblical. And I would even say, well, I don't know if the current government of Israel is the biblical nation of Israel. I mean, right. it's led by a lot of secular non-religious people it's not necessarily the same thing but again not to quibble or not to right, 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 not right. to go down a different road or whatever but i think there are good faith christian interpretations of what what we should do here right. I, I think we are well, specific to israel we always fight terrorism we always protect american citizens if they've been kidnapped or killed we need to root out and kill terrorists yeah but i start worrying about sending hundreds of billions to whether right. it's Ukraine or Israel, I start worrying like time out, where's that in the constitution? Right. And half the time the U S government's funding both sides. Anyway, we were funding Hamas, you know, or we had been, or the Israeli government was funding Hamas early on because they wanted to kind of mow the lawn. As they said, they wanted right. to keep yeah. up like a, an unpalatable resistance to the PLO, which was leftist. You know, right. 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 So, right. so mm -hmm. you start getting into that stuff. It's like, Oh my gosh, whether it's the U S government, with the Iran Iraq war, that's a different thing. Or if it's like Israel, like, oh my gosh, was Likud or Benjamin Netanyahu, they wanted to keep Hamas up. So they were more of a fundamentalist, crazy counterbalance to the leftist PLO. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is why we shouldn't get involved. Right. Just like in Afghanistan. Right. And I'm sorry to go on a rant here, but no, I, I read understand. this book, Ghost Wars, what yeah. the CIA did in Afghanistan in the mid 80s. Because right. yeah, we want to get the commies. I, I just, I hate commies as much as the next guy. But in fighting the Soviet Union, we're literally handing out and funding radicals with Qurans. They were sh the CIA was shipping Qurans in to the the mountains of Afghanistan because they wanted to rad radicalize these guys mm -hmm. in the mid '80s. And then what happens? Fifteen years later, three thousand Americans are killed because those guys they're like a scorpion. They're gonna sting someone. They're gonna turn yeah. around. They're gonna sting us. Yeah. And Osama bin Laden, as much as he's a brutal, horrible murderer, right? But then he turns around and says. Your government was involved here, here, and here, and you have military bases on the the Arabian Peninsula, and it ends up coming back around and it kicks our butt in the end. Right. Because um, right. not us, not you, not American citizens, but our government acting on our behalf, mm -hmm. they get us into wars, they get us into trouble. They're funding this guy, they're funding that guy, and those guys are fighting. We're funding both sides of conflict. Yeah. Sorry, I'll come up. No, no, that's not, I just go saw, ahead. I just no, saw. No. I just, I just saw it. Uh, I always say TikTok because that's where you get all your videos from. Where <laughs> Trump? Okay, so there was a four-star general that just left recently, right? I think it was. I forget his. Uh, oh, uh, was it Millie? Yes, he yeah. just recently walked yeah, up. Yeah. So Trump was given. A, 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 I think it was Millie. Yeah, he was given a. He was talking about a situation where he was the general was talking to Trump, and he said, "Look, we got to get out. We got to get out quick." But what we're going to do is we're going to leave all these tanks. We're going to leave a lot of these helicopters. Yeah, yeah. So then Trump says, what? Yeah. That, that one tank is like yeah. billions of stuff. What this? What? That's billions. We're going to do what? It would it would cost how much to get this and go out? Right. But he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he knew what they were doing. And I think a lot of times when you have these conversations, and I think that's what makes it hard is we don't trust our government at no, the end of the day. No. Yeah. We, we just don't. When they, when the minute they, when the minute they start fighting somebody else's border issue 
and not looking at yours, the minute you just don't trust them. And where like, is that's the just logic common sense. That? Yeah, yeah. where's the, the common sense in that? Exactly. But but they, they cover it up. It, well, coming back to, to the Southern border, they, what they do is they cover it up because the Hispanic community is large here and they tug mm -hmm. at the heartstrings mm -hmm. because name what other community, I mean, not really, name what other culture, I, I would say, or that your family's right there. Right. 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 Africa, way over there. Sure. Europeans, way over there. With right. us, it's right there. Yeah. So I don't even know anybody anymore in my family tree that's there or anybody in my family. Sure. I don't know anybody. But a lot of people would say, what are you talking about? Talk about my people. And they, they play to that. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, yeah, we'll just flood the gates and we'll do this. And then we'll go fight this over here. And then we'll talk about and how evil the left, I mean, the right is and how they just don't like this at all. And they hate people. And look what it, and they just, like you said, the government just plays this vicious game and right. they're better at it. Funding both sides, playing both sides. off each other. Yeah. And they're just Obama, it's a, but it's, you know, it's a strategy. It's a concept. I right. think we know there's an agenda behind what our current, you know, government is pushing. Yeah. And it's very obvious, yeah. very obvious. And unless right. you're just completely ignorant to what's going on and you just don't you're they're just uneducated them. yeah you're just that's you're just not paying attention to what's really going on or don't want to pay attention at times too yeah um I a mean, lot of idolatry or exactly if i may jump in yeah. I, I think yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. good point and i would take that point over to even federal reserve policy i, I love to attack the fed. sorry right, right, right. Right. and the fed right yeah. but what they're doing they keep the interest rates low and you, you might be thinking okay what are we talking about interest rates for but Bear with me here. Yeah. I think they play on that cheap money, cheap cost to borrow money, mm -hmm. credit. Yeah, get a credit right. card. Mm -hmm. um, up until now, you know, not now so much, but five, ten years ago, they create these housing booms where everyone go out and get four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar house. Literally everybody, million dollar homes. Make it rain. Go out, get these liar loans. You don't have to prove any. Just go out and borrow. You're stimulating the economy. You're a good American. Mm -hmm. You're a patriot. Consu what do they tell us after nine eleven? Go out, buy, consume. Like that's our civic virtue. It's consumption. It's mindless consumption. We become a nation of deadbeats. Right. We borrow cheap money. Don't worry, we'll print more. We'll print more, more dollars. We'll put more dollars into circulation than the world has ever seen. We can print it. That's immoral. I mean, that's like essentially counterfeiting. Right. When yeah. the Federal Reserve yeah. presses a button, they create more digital money, send it out. And who gets that money anyway when it first comes in from the Federal Reserve? You know, it's going to be banks, financial banks, institutions. Right, right. It's going to be bailing out, was it Bear Stearns? Or bailing out these huge financial companies and corporations. And so to bring it back around to just what you were saying, mm -hmm. it's an idolatry. I think it's a worship of money. And I think it plays what upon the worst the, instincts of humans. Just greed, avarice. Right. Is it uh, the God of uh, Moloch? Is that what they used to call it back in the biblical time? Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> we got them all. Yeah. Sacrificing your children, the putting them on the and, hot hand. Yeah. yeah sacrificing yeah. your children to, yeah, not only money, but then sacrificing your kids to false gods. Well, uh, definitely it's, idolatry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, sure. it really does. It goes back. I mean, if you really do, you know, do the study on that. I mean, looking back at, at what they did, it was all for prosperity, prosperity and um, yeah, just pretty much advancing themselves in well, life. So much has changed. I mean, if you look at just, I don't know, so it's much just has just changed in it's the last hundred years, you know, even, yeah. since the progressives right. started ruining the country, right. you know, yeah. 1913 right. on. Yeah. Just so much has changed. So it's kind of hard. You got a new generation. that's just, they're all driven by this, you know, in a different way, not to change, yeah. but to get attention, you right. know, right. and that's what they're driven by. So they don't care where it comes from or who it hurts as long as it feeds whatever that is. Inside, right. You know? right. Right. Yeah. It's an internal thing where they need attention. <laughs> and keep the keep the population, give them their bread and circuses, right? right? Keep them pacified. Keep them, you know, soaking your thumb, watching yeah, yeah. Netflix. And again, we always say, you know, I don't want to vilify Netflix, but there's a lot of unsavory stuff on there. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I got to watch my kids with YouTube, oh, yeah. Netflix, right. Absolutely. all this stuff. Yes, yes. YouTube shorts. It's like, man, yeah. they're just, it's like dopamine hits, you know? Maybe Instagram Reels, similar thing. I mean, but. it's sad. It's sad when you look at the way culture is now today, because I mean, I you know, I've had conversations with my 12 year old, you know, and she... I remember one time I was just sharing not just, you know, sharing how fun it was when I was a kid, you know, we'd ride our bikes and we'd yeah. go visit the neighbors, you know, in the back, in, you know, in the alley of our house and back of our house, you know, we'd stay out till seven in the evening, just oh, playing yeah. with our friends, yeah, you know, for sure. whatever we were doing, it was always outside. And um, I remember sharing that with her and she just stayed really quiet. And, and I said, what are you thinking about? And she just said, 
you're so lucky, mom. Really? Yeah, that was wow. her response. Okay. She was, you were so lucky. And I realized in that moment, that's right, because we, I don't let her go outside in the front yard. To yeah. be, it's just right. not safe anymore. Right. It's a I two-way mean, thing. Have, it's not have, just the kids. It's also yes. us parents. I mean, even recently in our neighborhood, I mean, luckily we have a neighborhood watch where we connect through Facebook yeah. and it's for our neighborhood. But I constantly go on there because, you know, you have the ring cameras outside, mm -hmm. you know, you have the, you know, they're, they're recording things Yeah. and they're constantly saying, Hey, watch out. There's these, per there's these people that are driving up in the cars. The kids are walking yeah. home from school because yeah. our school where my daughter goes is literally right there. Like she could walk okay. to the house, but I don't let her still because I'm afraid that someone will come and snatch her up right. and right. nobody will ever pay attention to what's going on. And that's just the society that we're living in today. Yeah. We, we, we're even getting people who are breaking into our houses during the, the brightest day of the day. They don't care anymore. Yeah. They knock down the doors. They say that they're police or whatever the case might be to get in. It's just not a safe generation anymore and i feel bad for this generation that unfortunately the only outlet they have is social media that's the only outlet that they have to actually you know feel somewhat connected connected maybe mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no it's it's a real thing i mean even very similarly my daughter um she's now 11 it's like we love for her to have neighborhood friends mm -hmm. you know a few blocks mm -hmm. away we she's got some friends and it's like it's a rarity that we encourage her to ride her bike or just walk over there because yeah. i'm like what could go wrong right. you know, on those yes. two blocks? Oh yes. my gosh, yes. it could be 10 minutes that we're hear, out of contact. With, you with hear her, so right? many things on the news, you know, so-and-so, you know, this kid got taken, they can't find so-and-so. I mean, we have a friend who, um, she, that's, her, that's what she does. She finds missing kids here in Kern County. Wow. And the stories that she shares with me of the parents that are missing these kids, or even, you know, cases where some of these kids end up, you know, God forbid they end up, you know, passing away or whatever because of the circumstance. Yeah. But the things that she tells me, it frightens me because I think, oh my gosh, our kids are not safe. They're not mm -hmm. safe to just walk down the down the street, not even a couple of houses. And even for me, I'm a helicopter mom, if you want to call me. And I don't okay. care whether you want to call me that for me. Right. I have to know the parents. That's just me. Sure. I have to know who the dad is. I have to know who the mom is. I need to have your who phone Who are the numbers. uncles that are going to exactly. be there? Exactly. Like yeah. who's living yeah. with you? Like Can I we like do a to sleepover? have at no. least yeah. a conversation mm -hmm. to see if you're on the same page as I am in regards yeah. to even how you watch over your kids. Yeah. Like for me, that's important because if my daughter wants to go and hang out with certain girls, I mean, even today you're dealing with what, you know, a lot of identity issues, you know, you, you have a lot of, you know, my daughter has me on a group text you know, with um, some of her little friends and mm -hmm. the things that these girls, I mean, they know that I'm on there. They see, they know that I'm a parent and they see yeah. what I'm, I look at. Right. And I've had to jump on and kind of correct and, you know, their, their conversations and what they say to each other. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's, but I, but I'm okay looking at it because at least I know, okay, this is what my daughter's surrounding herself with. Sure. So I need to guide her. I need to direct her. I need to talk to her, have, have those hard conversations with her and reminding her who she is. Right. right? But it's not safe anymore. You have to be on them like constantly and you have to see what they're doing. Especially emotionally I right. think, and yes. psychologically and morally. Yes. I mean, the culture that I'm sure we share a very similar worldview uh, as Christians, the culture that we're living in. And I don't want to sound like just some old lady yelling at the sky yeah, or Dana yeah. Carvey as a church lady. I'm yeah. not, not saying prudish stuff, but the culture that we're all imbibing, like fish swimming around, it's just like the water around us. Oh, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's like pagan, it's idolatrous, right. it's encourage avarice and greed, yep. it's do whatever makes you feel good, yeah, yeah. there's virtue in being a victim, uh, celebrate yourself, do whatever you want, self-care, yeah. if I could, I barf every time in my mouth, I hear self-care, something, yeah. that doesn't mean don't care for yourself, it's right, right. self-care, it's so, ugh, so reflexively, right. yeah. like go take care of your elderly neighbor. Your right. grandma. Yes. What is this yes. self care? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's yeah. why they've kind of God. that's why social media is kind of um, popular. It's like the lottery or or gambling. It's an instant gratification. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. I could put twenty dollars in and play the lotto, and then all of a sudden it's like oh, I lost another one. And yeah. Another one. Dopamine. Ooh, I kind of went dopamine. Boom, boom. Yeah. So it's like you post how many likes? Yeah. Three likes. Oh, that makes me feel good. Yeah. How many more? Four more likes. 300. Okay, let, me show 3, little, let me show a little bit more skin. That got me 20 more. That instant gratification yeah. has taken over our culture. And especially with the young kids, 
and they live for that. Yeah. It's yeah. no different than when you go to the casinos, the kids are dealing the same feeling, right? But at a young age, yes, yeah. and they're doing yeah. whatever to get that same feeling. Yeah, and, and there are there are a lot I think maybe who would agree with us on a personal moral level who might say, but yeah, that's why we need to get you know. They might not say the government needs to get involved, but, you know, getting more of that mindset of, yeah, laws or legislation could help fix it. Mm -hmm. And I tend to be much more hands off, much more non-interventionist, favoring more of a liberty based approach. But I'd say you can try with the laws. Like I don't support a bunch of laws that regulate all of our morality. But here's the deal. It won't work anyway. Yeah. If, you know, was it John Adams? It was all the founders who said, if you don't have a moral and religious people, this experiment will not work right mm -hmm. and here we are in the year 2023 right mm -hmm. look around right we can have all the laws the government we want but if we're not a moral and i would dare say religious people at least the people who say there is a god you know we are not yeah. god you are not a god we cannot right. make ourselves god yeah at yeah. least that much uh -huh. at least the thomas jefferson level of, you know yeah. he was not an orthodox christian have you ever seen that live but with ravi zacharias and ben shapiro I think I have years ago, years right? Years ago. That I Before was, Robbie, well, yeah, he passed away. Passed now, away. Years I always and years tell ago. people yeah. it's just the conversation they have with each other is like, I don't know, it's just a good conversation with Robbie Zacharias. is like, when you take morality out of this country, what do you substitute morality with? And that's like, to me, that's the biggest question to the left because they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, because what ends up happening is, what do we base off? What are we basing our opinions off? There has yeah. to be something in the middle that we're both going, okay, I can only go this far. You can only go this far before. So when they take morality or God out of the country, then it just, then it just it's becomes a free for all. Right, right, right. So I, I think that I, I've learned that with a lot of leftists, they sit back and go, what do you mean? I said, because where's your line in the sand? Well, Where do you I, I, I think it's okay to have the lesbian and gay thing. But I'm not for that. Okay, well, then when you've shifted that line, then that person that thinks that, that I think you're extreme, the person behind you doesn't think you're extreme enough. Exactly. Yeah. And then they go. It's an infinite regress. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So they'll sit there and go, well, and I'm like, so would you rather have it where it was or would you keep on wanting it to go down the road? Yeah. And it's like a simple conversation. Where do you set that line? Yeah. And what, they're, they're who just, decides? Right. And they're like, yeah, exactly. But when you go off of this foundation, then we can have a conversation. But when you don't, then we're so far apart, yeah. we're never going to meet anyone. Right. Yeah. I've had this same, com very similar conversation with left-leaning friends who mean well. They have good intent. They care about humans individually. Right. But they say, you know, it's on morality. And then hence it gets into government mm -hmm. uh, inevitably. But it's like, well, I, I don't think there's universal morality. Or, you know, I have a friend who's not mm -hmm. really a believer. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't want to persecute you. I don't want to be mean to you or uncool. But so how do we craft a society around your worldview? Where, well, this is wrong to me, but morality is different depending on the observer. It's like, well, okay, I can respect your point of view, but you realize we can't have a society then. We cannot have a civilization no. where your morality is this. Where does it come from? Well, it doesn't come from God because that person's not a believer. It comes from in here. Right. Okay, well, I don't know what's in here because I have my own in here, mm -hmm. right? And if we all have our own in here, and for the audio podcast, I'm pointing to my, my brain, my head. If we're all inside our own heads, like, right. yeah, morality is, it's, it's what we agree to as the set of laws and standards because it comes from my mind and it feels good. And then if we just talk and if we have an agreement, that's morality. No, because you're never going to get 330 million people that say, oh, yeah, we all agree to one, that two, one. three, so four, you're gonna, five. You're gonna <laughs> so where you have a conflict, yeah. then what's the ultimate truth? Right. That's what What's they, the objective morality? The that's what they, so yeah. how do you have a society built on that? Well, that's what you like you said. That's why we have a constitution. It is. It's not a rock science. If you if, if somebody doesn't believe in God, but you go through a, a, a signal light and you kill, they're going to feel bad. Where does that feeling come from? That that's your moral compass. Sure. Look at the so ripple, a lot of the ripple effect. Yeah. So has, a lot. The majority you know, of people that know that that's yeah. wrong, right? The majority yeah. of people are going to sit there and go, "Okay, that's wrong." I always tell people that feeling. That's that's like Robbie Zacharias said that. That, just like a constitution, somebody wrote that. God wrote that inside of you. That's a moral compass that God put inside of you, right? I agree. So, so yeah. I, 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 when he said that, I was like, We all no. have an antenna. Right. Yeah. A little antenna. So then I was like, man, he said yeah. it so well. So I, I always tell people that is what we have to argue off of, whether you believe it or not. Because what ends up happening is when we don't have that, then what do we gauge anything off, like you said? Right. Because nobody knows what's going on in here. Yeah. And we're like, how do you put so many millions of people together? Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. It's, it, it won't last. Right. Yeah. 
right? We can't all have our own conceptions of like what's morality, what's not morality. And then when we come together, there's got to be a way to work that out. Right. Yeah. And there will always be, t- look, what's, look how wide the gulf is now with mm-hmm. some people are like, trying to go out and groom children. They're, they're saying you can sexualize children with content and with books and mm-hmm. showing mm-hmm. disgusting images and, you know, yada, yada, yada. We've seen it ad nauseum the past few years, yeah. right? Yeah. In school board meetings and in the popular media and the news, yeah. it's everywhere. So you have people who say that's okay. And then people who are saying, oh no, what no, are you thinking? Yeah. We have 3000 years of our tradition here, our moral tradition going back. You know, I know Judeo Christians, a very blobby term, but connecting to the 10 commandments, right. let's say a 10 commandments kind of based morality. Uh, that's more than 3000 years. Right. Um, we've got that, you know, so we have that foundation for it's worked for a few thousand years mm-hmm. in, in the West, let's say broadly, you know, Jerusalem and Athens. But um, then you have other people who are denying that saying, no, we find our own truth, man. You know, we do what feels good. You do you. You have self-care. You, you find yourself and blah, blah, all the aphorisms, you know, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's fine. We want to be peaceful with one another. But what we have to do is we have to find a way where we can actually come together as a society. Right, right. I think it's just so, drawing that line. I think it's those boundaries. We have to go back to boundaries. Yeah. What is a boundary for you? And then looking at that and saying, okay, yeah, you know what? That isn't right. And, you know, unfortunately we're living in a society right now where it's too much free for all and um, not a lot of really logical, like common sense yeah. uh, decisions, decision-making. We definitely seem to have gone off the rails. I don't know how we get back on the rails. I mean, there can always be a, a revival. You mm-hmm. know, you go back to first principles, you go back to God. Um, and again, right. this is not like the, you know, the Christian Bible beater hour here. Right. What, we're, what I'm saying, and I think what you guys are saying is that we're going to have a healthy society if we have a society that's based on God, or at least, you know, you go back to Thomas Jefferson and mm-hmm. some of the people who wrote the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, they weren't all traditional Christians, but at the very least, they recognized a creator, right. which is like the bare, I realize bare minimum, right? But they realized yeah, there's a God. Well, yeah, there, even if they were even, deists and they thought it was a removed God and they weren't traditional Christians and Benjamin uh, Thomas Jefferson kind of wrote his own Bible and all that. He thought Jesus was a great teacher. I get it. But at least we have that bare fundamental. Yeah. And I think more than that, but we have that bare foundation of there is a God yeah. and hence natural right. We're all born inherently with rights. There's mm-hmm. a wrong and a right. Yeah. And yeah. it's totally consonant. It's in, it's in consonance with Christianity where it's like, we're created in the likeness and image of our creator. Right. Even if Jefferson or some of the other, or Thomas Paine, if they weren't kind of on board as Orthodox Christians mm-hmm. or what I mean is traditional Christians there. Um, but nonetheless, if you can tap into at least that bare minimum, right. Then that's something, you know, um, tying into a common foundation. I mean, it's 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 difficult because I don't think that our culture actually wants to head in that direction, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. I, I think some. I mean, some of us do. Some of us do, but we're pulling apart rapidly. Right. I think. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like even those of us who are like more on the liberty end or just the constitutionalist end, libertarian end. At the end of the day, the Constitution is just words on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Not because, oh, it's the greatest thing that came down from, you know, uh, with Moses, you know, yeah. on, on the tablets. No, it's just a pretty darn good document that if we have the guts and if we have the backbone to, to back it up, mm-hmm. we use that as active players to say, no government, you're limited. Mm-hmm. There's nothing divinely inspired about the Constitution. It's just a damn good set of it's basically like a instruction book for government. Yeah, I think this why, is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Right. For us, that's why I feel like legs. It's huge because to a lot of people that are on the left the constitution they're like it, it'll never get them it's to change. dead man it's dead it'll never get them to change your life but to us the bible will yes and the bible install it's, it, it still life. still puts morality back into the mittens to hell in a hand basket and people are are believers are becoming less and less and people are going less and less to church you're not if you're not in sync with the Lord, your morality goes down and then you teach your kids that, too. Yeah. And we're having a generation. So we feel like with us, we want to go to the core of it and, and, and bring out that morality of them. Right. And then after that, be like, there you go. These are the issues we're fighting is, for. And we just feel like that's our call right. because yeah. it has. We we've, we've brought so many people that never voted before and never cared to come back and, and say, you know what? I'm conservative. I never knew that. And I'm going to run for school board. And it's like. 
How many other organizations have ever done that? Went the back, it's, they always come from the front door in, but we came a whole different way. We came from the change their lives around right. and not just say, hey, this makes sense because it, then you're just waiting around for somebody to hurt their pocket or you're just waiting yeah. around for somebody to go through a situation for them to get it. But with us, we're like, here's the word of God. And they're like, we get that. Okay, well, do you get this? Right. We have, we're linking it together. And we feel yeah. like that's yeah. been right. a winning recipe for us. And it's yeah. truth. It's standing on truth. Right. And sure. I think that that's why, yeah. I mean, even compromise is such a big word. You know, you have, you know, that's for us, that's why we stand on our, our, on the standards that we have, because look at what compromise has gotten where we're at now. Right. Right. And so that's. Erode and chip away at everything. Yes, right? exactly. And then it exactly. starts eroding away our foundation. Yes, exactly. And that's They get mad because right they're now. like, how could you vote for Trump? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if you're looking at an imperfect world, right? In general, you, you want a perfect world. You're never going to get that. But I'd rather have what we have now then go down the path that we're going down. And if you can't see that, then guess what? You're, you're a part of the problem, but you've got to recognize that this right here, they're like, you want racist? You want... Look, I just don't want to go here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd rather have it here. And if you can't recognize that, and a lot of people get mad at us for that. But if you were to look at a group like us online, you would be like these Jesus freaks, whatever. But if there's not people that don't draw a line in the sand, then the, that line always gets moved. And there has to be somebody that says no. And you may not agree, but no. Mm -hmm. And I truly respect people like that because those are the people that 10 years from now are going to be looked at as extremists. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They will. They're going to be like, look at them. And I'm like, well, yeah, but guess what? I never bend it. And yeah. I got a lot of people to think just like me. Yeah. And you right. wish we yeah. were back at that point. Right. But we're not. Right. And I think, yeah. I, you know, and I, I look at that and I see majority of Latinos do think the way that we do. It's like going back to what you said. It's very, they're not going to come out and say, oh, well, you know, for me, like, for instance, in my home, we, we knew that obviously the LGBTQ has been around for a long time. Right. Right. And so, well, the you know, LGB and then they kind of keep, yeah, they right. add and on they another add letter. On, yeah. yeah. But go and ahead. So, um, you know, so they've, it. they've right. been, you know, they've been around obviously, but you know, and they, and they all fought for different types, you know, depending on the generation that they were in at the time, right. what they need, what right. they wanted. But for the most part, I mean, gr growing up in a Latino family, I mean, yeah, we had we we had that we had to face that. Mm -hmm. But it was always like even within the family, we're like, OK, well, you know, um, we don't agree with you. OK, because I could probably say that for a majority of the Hispanic culture is that, OK, well, we don't agree with that, but we're also not going to we're not going to be like you're 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 going to kind of do your thing mm -hmm. and we'll we'll respect you. But don't bring that into our home. Right. Like keep a boundary, set a boundary in a respectful way. Right. And, and it's not even, and, if I may, I'm guessing it's not even that that person, that individual might have been gay or lesbian. Um, a big part of it too is, and I think even a lot of Christians who are kind of poo-poo this, but it's like, and again, not to sound like the church lady, mm -hmm. Dana Carvey, like, oh, uh -huh. you know, clutch my pearls. But to really, Christians, you know, in the Bible and certainly in Catholicism, the teaching of the church, mm -hmm involves sexual morality mm -hmm. and that's not just it's not just scolding yeah gays and lesbians right. it's also like hey we're growing up in this culture where it's like oh go out what's your body count how many people have you slept with this and yeah. that and the other yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like it doesn't really well there are certain issues you know gay lesbian this and that but it's also straight people it's all human beings mm -hmm. it's right chastity it's respect for your body right. respect for the other's body right it, right. And that all encompassing morality. But so often I, it's like there's this tunnel vision with mm -hmm. just the LGBTQ, LMNOP, you know, that right. whole thing. Right. But it's like, well, there's this whole other issue, too, with even I don't care if straight people or whatever. It's like, yeah, don't go out and be a floozy. Don't sleep with a bunch of people. Don't right. I mean, yes. have respect for your body, yes. have respect for others. Yes. Again, yes. not to go out and preach and get in someone's face and be a prude and oh, clutching mm -hmm. my pearls. But I find it, it, it's kind of funny. Um, there are a lot of problems with, you know, the radical sexual rights movement and uh -huh. the LGBTQ plus da, 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 da. But there are also problems with the old fashioned, you know, right. body count. Yeah, yeah. Boys will be boys. He went out and he slept with a bunch of women or this or that. The other, right, right. It, it goes there too. Um, I mean, I to just add on to what yeah, you that was that yeah. before that was that. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. right, right. It's yeah. not that dissimilar. No. I mean, it's not the same thing, but. 
Yeah. 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 No. And I think, I think as conservative Christians, I mean, for the most part as a mom, I think for me and what I believe in and what I stand for, I mean, you know, if, if you're part of that and you want to live that way, that's your, that's your prerogative. I mean, that's your business. But when you start coming at our children and you're wanting to force it on our kids or force it to be part of the culture as a whole, and now you want me to come in and play into your little fantasy world that you've created in your mind, thinking that, you know, and I'm sure. sorry, I'm being blunt. I know, but the reality of it is, is that, you know, when you look at science and how they say, well, you know, let's believe in science and not in God. I mean, okay. So if we're believing in science and you're born a male, then you're a male and you're not a female. Right. And, and so right. when you start playing into that, you're, and you're starting, I, these ideas like, are crazy. Right. Totally. Right. And so, um, you know, when you start putting it in that sense and now you're wanting us to play into that mindset and you want us to agree with that, that's where I draw the line. Because yeah. for me, it's like, no, we respected you on the fact that you wanted to be that. OK, we respected you on the fact that you wanted to live that way. You wanted to be part of the society in the sense of us respecting you and just embracing you. But now it goes further to now you're wanting us to actually play into the, pronoun, the pronouns, calling you a woman when we know you're not going against our moral values and what we believe right. in. How is that even fair? It's a power the board? play. Exactly. It's, it's, we know what exactly. it is. It's and a power so, play. If you can get I'm someone to say up game. is down yeah. or the grass outside is pink. Right. And so if you can get a person to say a man can become a woman mm -hmm. or we need to put tampons in a men's restroom, if you can get a society to go along with that, you can convince them of anything. anything. And then you're just putty in their hand. They can right. get you to do it. I think right. in the bigger picture, like looking at- and That's the like, manipulation and what the government wants right now. Yeah, right. I believe that's true. And looking at it from like a Christian standpoint, sin is never satisfied. Yeah. It never is. Like it wants more. So it's, yes. it's a hung, it's a yes. devouring lion, yes. right? Yes. So it wants yes. more, so it goes Feeding here and it keeps soul. on going and it evolves into this crazy thing. So it's like, yeah. yeah, it's just like it's never ending. And so we do, we need that moral compass. And that's why we stand by the word of God. Yeah, so to, to bring it back full circle, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate your time. To bring it back, to kind of wrap things up, because there are so many issues we could riff and talk forever, but um, yeah. I want to let you guys go. Um, to bring it back to Lexit, then bring it back there. How can people who are interested in these ideas and more, how can they join the movement? Um, do you have to be Latino? I know we kind of talked about this earlier. What should they do? Should they reach out to you, the website? How should people they get They can involved? definitely reach out to me. Um, well, we have we have a main website, which is wearelexit.com. Um, okay. They right. can jump on there. Because um, I went to Lexit, not to interrupt you. I went to Lexit.com and it was like, I don't know, a commercial, like uh, some industrial thing. So it's wearelexit.com. Yeah, wearelexit.com. Yeah. It's all okay. lowercase all together. And you just jump on, you hit join, and then we'll automatically get the information and we'll contact you. Sure. Um, I mean, we do have emails where you can reach us as well. Right. Yeah. So social um, media platforms. Yep. We're on social, we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. Lillian, what's your Instagram? Uh, mine's uh, Lillian Lopez Lexit. Yeah. And, right. and, and then the bigger Lexit page is Lexit Movement. Yeah. And um, Lexit California. And then we have the reason why we're also big as well is it's, uh, you see a lot of people with their movements, but we have, influencers with thousands of followers as well yeah so yeah. We we're a branch yeah. of like like our our um for instance our um um uh sylvie's position she's our uh, events coordinator, events coordinator national okay. events coordinator she has 20 something thousand followers on instagram mm -hmm. she's always advocating for it so we have so yeah. many people that have thousands of followers it's like the this, spreading it's, the tentacles. It's, it's like this. Yeah, yeah. it is. It and, is. And, we're getting and, more of a, yeah, a so support. Yeah, so we're the largest Latino more. uh conservative movement in the nation. Yeah. And that's for a reason. Yeah. You know, and and we're all we're trying to do is fight moral issues yeah. in our community because we feel like a lot of Latinos lead with that. And that's our best goal. That's our best or foot forward, we would say. Yeah. And um here at here uh, in Bakersfield, um we're noticing that it's within the first two months of starting the chapter, it's like exploded. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's okay. like we got a lot of people you probably would know yeah. in town that a lot fight of friends. Fr friends that have reached out and we're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And they're like, do we have yeah. to be Mexican? We're not Mexican. And we're like, yeah. no, and you we got don't. Muslims. Join us. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. I mean, if you, like, you got if jihads. You, yeah. Yeah, right. you have, yeah, you can be with the Taliban. Yeah, you can for be God's with the sake. Taliban. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, you don't have to be Mexican to join. No. You just right. You, we covered that. You gotta have sure. you know common sense. Obviously, yeah. that's a big one. Moral standards, you know. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off there no, or no. interrupt. Yeah. But once again, I think we mentioned it earlier. It doesn't mean that you're joining the Republican Party or yeah, all of a sudden no, you're a GOP no. hack or anything. It doesn't mean that. You can be conservative. You could be libertarian. I don't even, be, I don't even call myself I'm an independent. Republican. I'm, I'm an independent. I'm registered independent. independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an independent So that's a key well. point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're not like Mitt Romney well, if you join all of a sudden. I, I like you know. to call myself kingdom independent. Just right. Because okay. Or we call ourselves Biblicans. Biblicans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's like a term that Jesse gave. And we we're like, eh, I guess we'll do that. Right. But it's not, like you said, it's not leaving the, the Democratic Party coming to the Republican Party. It's leaving the Democratic Party and be able to have your own thought, your own mind. And if you want to vote for, like a lot of people now are liking, what's his name, the Kennedy guy, you know. RFK. And, yeah, RFK. And, and they're like, yeah. he's cool. Don't go RFK. Yeah, don't go RFK. <laughs> but yeah, but a lot of people. For like, various yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah. It, but I, I, we sit back and we go, hey, look, if, if it, that, that fits you, cool. We, we'll objectively say this and that. But at the same time, the whole portion, the whole part of legs in our portion when it comes to that is to take that mindset if you have to. Yeah. The yeah. D, yeah. the D and D. And it's you don't have to do that at all. You, you're able to have your own mindset. And who cares if they call you a coconut? Who cares if they call you a white supremacist now? Or you're not really Mexican, you're whitewashed, whatever they call you. The, the, I'd rather be called a traitor to my race than be called than when I stand before God saying yes. that I'm a traitor to him yes. because yes. I voted my go godly moral values. Yes. And I think that's important to my theme community. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling God would say, you mean a traitor to the human race? Right. 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 Exactly. This, this idea of race, right. I don't know where you guys are coming right. up with this. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, but awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Um, I want to help you guys out. We're neighbors. We're here in town. Yeah. We'll right. see each other for sure. Um, Thank you guys very much. Make sure to check them out yeah. on Instagram, all the socials. You got them all here. Yeah. And uh, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you, you very much. Thank you for this has been the California Liberty Project Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, share it with others, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter.